welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. It's the finals of Busta Fatty. Casey Beckstead is stepping in here with a kid that personally I love, man. This guy's one tough cat. Ivan the Terrible Taylor, man. I would tell you, he's such a good kid. He just wants to fight all the time. He doesn't care. I think he's going to be a great fight because both and, guys. And he brings half of Utah County when he comes to lightweight kickboxing. Check it out. What does it mean to you to be fighting tomorrow in the finals? And then also tell us why you think you're going to beat Ivan Terrible over here. Because uh, I'm leaner and I'm meaner and I'm a face kicker, not a sh kicker. Oh, okay. All right, Ivan, right there, you heard it. Ivan, now now it's your turn to respond to that. We know that you've started a new training regimen and you've been winning. You've been being people. You said that you, you kind of revolutionized what you're doing to train and that meant switched from Lay's potato chips to Pringles. So talk to the people why you think, what it means to you to be fighting tomorrow in the finals. Also, why are you going to beat Mr. Casey over here? Well, I'm real excited. I finally got to the finals. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I never failed. I ever did what I can do. So basically, when he goes to bed tonight, he's going to have nightmares about picking himself up off the mat tomorrow. All right, well, you heard it right there. Both these guys talking a little smack just the way we like it. The best of luck to both you guys tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Well, if nothing else, Johnny Richie, we've got a couple of lightweights that know how to sling the smack in both Casey. Casey Beckstead and Ivan Taylor. I sure do like Casey Beckstead's response. You know, this kid is a classic, Mike. He's just a grumpy, ornery kid. <laughs> well, he comes from a grumpy, ornery group. You see those guys back there, Sean Riccadelli and, and uh, Drew Ellisor. These guys used to train at my gym. They're a good bunch of guys, and they know kickboxing. Casey Beckstead comes in at 5'9", 135 pounds. He looks like a pretty stout 135-pounder, though. No kidding. He is ripped. He's cut. He's, he's, in, he's in shape, and he's ready to have add another win to his belt. We know that he does have one win under his belt so far, and he really wants to add another one to it. I'm not, I didn't know that Ivan used to play for the Raiders, but he's coming in a Raiders outfit here. Uh, Ivan Taylor, we've seen him. He's done kickboxing. He's done NHB, but he really had a big win uh, leading up to the finals matchup here. Ivan goes 5'11", 140 pounds out of Riverton, and we all know him as Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible. He's the one that knocked Adam the Postman Falcon out, which is something that we didn't expect. So I, I, Ivan's kind of go, gone above and beyond what we expected out of him in the tournament. Well, you know, he expected to meet uh, Adam in the finals of this tournament, and it just so worked out in the the, uh, the brackets that they, they've met in the semifinals. But he shouldn't be overlooking this Casey Beckstead kid because he also had a big victory leading up to the finals match. And you see he's been working on his stare down as well. Yeah, he's crazy the, like that. He's got the Lima Poulet stare right there. His eyes are bugging out. Like I said, he's just ready to get this fight underway. Kickboxing is definitely one of these things, Mike, that we don't get to see a lot of. But this round, have we really seen more kickboxing than ever? Not only have we seen more of it, we've seen some pretty good kickboxing. This Beckstead kid's pretty talented kid, and Ivan Taylor has really come of his own. He's, he's come a long way since the early days. One thing about watching these other guys fight, Mike, is they are not afraid to throw the weather, and they do land some big shots. Ivan lands big shots, but he always throws those big looping punches, you know, and you can beat him to the punch if you just go straight down the pipe, and that looks like what Casey Beckstead has in store for him. Does Ivan have any kind of formal training? We always talk about how he says he doesn't have any formal training. Do we know, does he train Mike at the gym, or does he just roll around with his brothers up there in the Riverton? Nope, he sure doesn't. They just train with each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still I like a tough his, kid. I liked in his interview how he said he was uh, real excited. Like, I guess, I'm real excited about being in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, and this is actually his first appearance in the finals. Going up against tough kids, Casey Beckett. Oh, oh, my goodness. This fight is over. Ooh. I Ivan Taylor just took a right kick to the head, and Casey Bickstead, maybe a little foreshadowing in his pre-fight interview, said he's a face kicker, and he landed a big right foot there. Wow, Mike, I imagine we're going to be using that footage for a time to come. That was one heck of a knockout, and, and hopefully Ivan Taylor's going to be okay, and I imagine that he is. He, 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 he will be, I'm sure, but, you know, your body just goes limp when, when you get rocked like that, and you see the medics are in here really taking a close look at him. Looks like he's he's okay. He's getting up. Maybe he talked a little bit about uh, his opponent getting up off the mat at the end of the day. And, uh, boy, he's really got rocked. You see in your crush combat camp brought to you by Mountain High Motorsports where early on there were some good exchanges, but boy, Ivan Taylor just left his hands down and got cracked with a right foot. Wow, KO City. Well, Ivan, man, I hope you uh, got some smelling salts out and you feeling a little bit better today, but that is a shot and he is out. Well, that's probably the most devastating knockout we've seen. And, you know, Casey Busta Fatty Bex is feeling pretty good about that as well. He should. He's your lightweight kickboxing champion. And, uh, boy, he's going to wear that with a badge of honor.
This post-fight interview is sponsored by our friends at the Salt City Jail, the best steakhouse in town. Ivan Taylor's a proud guy. They said, you know, hey, you want to get out of here? Or do you want to stop and talk to the people? And you know what? Ivan's going to stand up here like a man and talk to you. What happened, man? I don't know. He has no idea. You know what? Ivan, I've been there, brother. You know what, though? I love you, man. I love you. Hell out of you, Ivan. You're a great kid. I'm proud of you. I hope we see you come back and do this thing again, right? Yeah, it feels a little different being on the opposite side. You know, everybody's got to taste it from now. Once Ivan, you taste Ivan. it, once you taste it, it makes you hungry. You never want to taste it again. So, Ivan Taylor, I don't even like saying it to you, brother. You were good, just not good enough tonight. But I, you know I love you, man. I'll be back. All right, bro. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. All right, Casey Beck said you come in here and fight a pretty tough kid, Ivan Taylor. You guys are mixing it up with your punches and you dropped that big kick. What was going through your mind when you swung that thing around? Whooping some ass. Well, right there, you did it. You beat him. You got the cup. What can we expect out of you in the future, Casey? You going to keep coming back and fighting? I'll be back. Yeah, he said he'll be back right there. Nice job tonight, man. You got the cup. Congratulations. In the show open, we talked a little bit about the changing of the guard. Adam Faulkner was long time the perennial champion of lightweight division. He got knocked out by Ivan Taylor, and then Ivan got knocked out. Yeah, it just shows you that one week you can be on top of the game, on top of the mountain, and the next week you're at the bottom. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. You can get caught with that shot any time. There's talk out there that, that Fat Busta Fatty is going to fight Jeffrey Willingham and HB coming up soon. Ooh, that's a fight I would love to see because both those guys are tough, they're physical, that'd be a great fight. Stay tuned for more of the Ultimate Combat. We'll have, we got more when we come back. <laughs> Trevor Lil Bang Osborne, we've been wanting to get this kid back in the ring since he won the championship how many times in a row, but he's just too young to go in the nightclub. So here's his opportunity. Who's he fighting? Hey, he's fighting Hector, the headhunter from Seca. This guy, he's won a couple times, Mike, and he says, I'm here to beat Little Bang, and I'm gonna prove it to you guys. When I talked to this kid, I said, this kid is probably the toughest kid we've seen in this weight class. He said, give him to me, so awesome. you got it, brother. Featherweight, no holds barred, check it out. Tell the people, we know that you had a victory last week into the UCE. Tell the people at home a little bit about that victory, and why do you think that's gonna help you beat Trevor Osborne tomorrow at the fairgrounds? It helped me get started. It let me know what was going on in the ring. I wasn't really prepared at all. Now that I know what's, what's going to happen when I first get in there, you know, I have some idea what to get ready for, how to feel my fighter out, you know, before I get started, and I'm going to do pretty good next week. Okay, dude, okay, you heard it right there. Says so he's going to do a pretty good job. And what about you, Trevor? What do you think you gives you the edge? We know that you were, you've been fighting with us for a while. We know you had to take a break because of an injury, but you're back. So talk to us about what it means to be back and why are you going to win tomorrow's fight? Um, after I got injured, I came back and trained harder than ever. I've fought some of the best flyweights that they have out there. Um, I just had more experience. I've gone three rounds. I know what it's like to go three rounds. Okay. Well, I heard right there, this guy says he knows what it takes. He says he's ready after his first fight last week. I can't wait to see you guys get on in the, in the fairgrounds tomorrow. Thanks a lot. We've got, good luck to both you guys. Okay, well, a little different approach there, Johnny Richie. These guys weren't slinging so much smack. These guys actually seem like they're, you know, they're, they got their game faces on, but they're going to talk a whole lot of smack about one another. More telling them, how, more telling the crowd and us how ready they really feel that they are. We know Little Bang is one tough kid, but Hector Fonseca is a guy that kind of came out of nowhere, Mike, and he beat up James McFadden last week, and, and he's just here to say, hey, I'm going to win this thing. He's 5'6", 145 pounds, goes by several different nicknames. I think he likes the headhunter the most. But, but Hector, uh, being experienced in getting in the ring and then being experienced in getting in the finals are two completely different things. And you're going to find out real quick here, James McFadden and Trevor Osborne are two completely different two fighters. Two completely different fighters. And Little Bang has been here before, Mike. We talked a little bit about the experience of being inside the ring with the cameras, the lights, the people. He's been there. He's done it all. He knows what it takes to do this. Right, well, that's no slight on James McFadden. This Trevor Osborne just that good. He goes 5'10", 140 pounds, goes by Little Bang, and, and he's just been so dominant in this division. We start to ask ourselves, can anybody beat this kid? We had to go to California to try to find a kid that could. <laughs> and I tell you, it's going to probably take that, Mike, because this kid is one tough kid. Changes the mood self-defense core one of the most respected and elite gyms that we have around those guys are a bunch of class acts and and they really show when they get in here and fight oh without question those guys are salt of the earth guys and as you mentioned just they're just warriors and you'll see trevor bang osborne look how composed he is how comfortable he is this kid's been here he's been to the dance he's done it before and phone second boy he's just a little herky jerky a little bit nervous to get things started hey but that kick landed right on his chops and he just licked him and <laughs> smiled he, he didn't even seem to bother him that much but they clinch up right now and this might not be a good idea for old hector Fonseca because he is a boxer 
Foster by trade. Well, you know, he did take that kick pretty well, but it was just one of those uh, things that I think Lil Bang was gauging distance by, and he, he gauged that distance, got in tight here, and almost had an arm lock on there, and, you know, he's looking to submit this kid in a, in a hurry. He is, Mikey. almost stepped that leg over, and I think if he would have got that right leg, oh, but well, instead he switches it up to a Hector. choke. <laughs> is that on tight or is that on tight? My goodness, Hector Fonseca's head almost came off from his shoulders, and Little Bang's happy about that. He's really happy about that because he hadn't had a chance to fight in a while. It's nice to get the ring rust out and get here and do his thing, but wow, you know, again, this kid, <laughs> it, can anybody beat him? Mushin Self-Defense Corps, wow, another win for you guys, another another trophy I think for the Mushin Self-Defense Corps. Well, you know, yeah, they keep bringing home titles from here in this weight class, and it's unfortunate the little Mac is uh, uh, in a Pedro Sauer affiliate because we won't ever see that matchup. You see here in your Crush Combat Cam brought to you by Beehive Bell Bonds where, you know, really it was just a one-sided match where Trevor Osborne is just far outclassed on this kid and, uh, and, and, and really Hector Fonseca is going to need to get back and get a little experience before he comes back. And, and that's what this is going to do, Mike. It's either going to do one of two things. You're either going to stop all together or you're going to get in here and fight. And, you know, little Bang Osborne is your winner tonight, your champion, and uh, congratulations to you. Well, buddy. Fonseca's got the right attitude. He'll be back, I guarantee it. This post-fight interview sponsored by American Bush, Utah's only 18 and over gentlemen's club located at 2630 South 300 West. Hector, man, I know you, you, your, your shoulder's in a little bit of injury right now, but you ran against a buzzsaw against Trevor Osborne. He was our previous champion, one tough kid. What was going through your mind when he was sinking that choke on? You got lucky, man. Okay, he got lucky. I put my shoulder under myself to push myself up, but it was against the bar. Yep. It's dislocated now. Hey, hey, well, he got lucky. No, okay, well, don't boo, because if you guys ain't in here, you don't know. But if that's how you feel, the tape might tell otherwise. He's a tough kid. Um, what can we expect? Are you going to fight again? Absolutely. All right, Hector. Tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This post-fight interview is sponsored by TrendLab.com, helping you deliver the knockout punch. Little Bang, it's getting to the point where you're just too good. It's hard to find your opponents. Thanks, man. I guess I got lucky on that one, though. You heard him, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's sometimes good to be lucky. If, if lucky's what you got, then I'll take it, brother. Yeah, I guess. I, I think guess you got some good. lucky guys right here, too, man, these uh, Mushin guys. They got you going, huh? For sure. I want to thank Brian and Brandon specifically. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them, as well as everyone else at Mushin Self-Defense. So, uh, big ups to the Mushin guys. They're always classy guys, and you can see they're bad dudes, too. Congratulations. Once again, you're our champion, brother. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It'd really be cool if we could get to the second round tonight, Johnny. Hey, you know what? We started a little bit late, but we're in the ultimate combat fashion. You're going to see some knockouts. There's some folks coming in here and doing their thing, and, and you, you might think initially that there are mismatches. It's just not that way. It's the way this sport goes. One day you could tap somebody out, the next day it could be you getting tapped out. And we've all seen that every fighter that's been in here has lost. I don't think there's one guy that's been absolutely undefeated, so it's going to happen to the best of them. Stick around, we got more. $500 cash. Don't miss all the action Saturday, April 23rd at the E-Center. Weigh-in start at noon, action begins at 1 o'clock. For more information, contact Robert Lovey, 801-699-1318. Be a part of the experience. Nothing says romance like the fights. I saw Zach Barlow here making out with his girlfriend, and they were like, making out. It was, <laughs> it was the most passionate thing I ever saw. Hey, it might be just because his brother's fighting next. Garrett Barlow's fighting Steven Rampage Flores. The Rampage? The Rampage is back? Hey, the Rampage is and, fighting tonight. And he's fighting Garrett Barlow. That's going to be a great matchup. This is a fight that I think a lot of people want to see, including ourselves. Okay. Well, check it out. It's Middleway in the Holes Bar. Check it out. What does it mean to you to be fighting tomorrow in the finals? And maybe tell us why you think you're going to beat Garrett the Obliviator Barlow. Uh, it means a lot. It just shows that we've been training a lot. We deserve to be there. Um, and for me, uh, beating him, I'm just the ground. I mean, I'm not going to be stupid enough to try to stand up with a guy that's taller than me, so I'm going to put him on the ground and hurt him. Why are you going to beat Stephen Flores tomorrow? Um, if it goes to our feet, uh, I can beat him there on the ground. I'm even better there, so good luck. All right, either way, they said this is going to be a battle. Garrett Barlow, Mr. Stephen Flores, good luck to both of you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot. 
Well, the second half of the bad boys is going to come out here in just a minute, Stephen Flores, but Garrett Barlow, this kid is, we've, we've talked about him, he's long, he's strong, and he's really, really come of, of age. I'm not really sure what he's doing right there, but he's got the pee-pee dance going on. Hey, he's got the pee-pee dance, but he is the obliviator, Mike, and he always puts up a great fight when he steps inside these rings. He's a tough kid, he really trains with some tough guys, and I think uh, Obliviator's got a future in this as well. Well, you know, if he, he, he's got a cute little girlfriend now, and my prediction is... He's out of here, man. This woman's going to take him out of the fights. Uh, a good-looking woman has been a downfall of many good fighters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Steve Flores, I don't think he has to worry about that. I don't think he has a girlfriend. <laughs> but he's coming in with the Bad Boys crew. He, we just saw Tommy Gunn fight and, and come away with a loss. Let's see if uh, Steve Flores can pick it up and get away. Walk Steven away Flores has, has a beautiful wife. What are you talking about? Oh, does he? He goes by the nickname of Rampage. He's 5'9", 195 pounds, and I give him the Purple Heart Award this round. He's been in fighting several times. He hasn't been so successful, but but he's been in there scrapping it, and he gives a good fight every time he gets in the ring. Consecutively, he, he has the award for the most uh, times fought this round. He definitely has stepped it up and get in here. And that's the way that the bad boys feel. They just feel that it's experience. Might as well get in here and fight. But you better bring more than just experience when you come in here to fight the Obliviator. Oh, just looking at the reach disadvantage here, boy. You, you, you know what the strategy's got to be, and that's it. Get in and take this kid down, which Steven Flores does a really nice job of doing. If he could have stayed out to the side there and, and keeps that side mount, he's going to be in good shape you get those big long legs uh, legs of Garrett Barlow around you you might be in a little bit of trouble very nice job to start things off here by Stephen Flores Stephen Flores did come in with the takedown put him to the mat but Garrett Barlow's doing a really good job of working off the cage Mike balancing himself up on it getting back to his feet using the cage to do that and that's one advantage that fighting in the cage gives you that's a great point Johnny you can see that he's been training in the cage and, and understands the nuances of having to to work with the cage and and did a nice job of getting reversal there but Stephen Flores is really impressing me at this point point in, uh, in the way he's handled Garrett Barlow. He's been able to get on top of him twice now, and uh, Ethan Andrews having to get over there and get our paddings fixed up here, but oh, it looks like uh, Stephen Flores left something behind there. That's right. Well, he's, I'll tell you what, he's a brute. You know, he's got a lot of strength. He's powerful. He does play a little bit of, like indoor football, so he does have that explosive power, but the one thing that he lacks is when he does explode, he doesn't really hold it that long. He just explodes, and then it's done, and, and I'd like to see more of, of, of him being steady. Well, being able to, oh, the explosion's oh. over. Explosion's <laughs> over. You know, as I mentioned a minute ago, he left something behind. When you leave an arm behind, you're going to get arm lock or triangle choked and this has kind of been the the uh the slight that people have had about the bad boys tempers and i don't think that's stephen flores's fault there i think uh uh, Garrett Barlow took a little jab at the, after the end of the fight here. You see here in your Crush Combat Cam, brought to you by American Bush, where Stephen Flores had a great start to this fight, and it just didn't end up so well for him. Wow, he got graded against the fence right there, and we saw it scratch his back a little bit. Then he gets tapped out, and this is where the... Oh, and he gives him a little shot right there, a little punch to the gut, and that really didn't uh, make Flores too happy. Well, that was, you know, very uncharacteristic of Barlow. I've never seen him do something like that, and understandably, that would make you upset, and, and uh, hopefully he, he watches this and sees that's probably not the way to handle things. Well, either way, he's the champion. Congratulations, Garrett. This post-fight interview sponsored by the Ultimate Combat Training Center in Kearns. Rampage, it didn't work out for you tonight, brother. I know you're not feeling too good about it. Let me know, what, what are you thinking, man? Nothing, really. I'm just going to rematch him again. He thinks he's a funny guy over there. Hey, that's all right. Go ahead and kiss it, buddy, because guess what? You're giving it up to me next time. Hey, that's all right. Hey, it's okay, baby, because you know what? That was some punk stuff to do after you took me out. All right, That's well, you know what? I, I think we're bigger than this, man. And, and frankly, I'm not real super hey. impressed with what's going on on either side. Hey, you were good, a, but hey, just not good enough tonight, brother. Steven Rampage Flores. He's a good fighter. He's a good, we'll fighter. He's a good fighter. Hell, give him that. This post-fight interview sponsored by American Bush, Utah's only 18 and over gentlemen's club. All right, we heard you winning Garrett Barnold tonight, Garrett. You get in here, you fight a tough guy like Steve, and then, you know, things happen. You get him in that chokehold. I wasn't sure the way it was going to go. It looked like he controlled a little bit of the of the fight at the beginning, and then you took it over. What was going through your mind when you were slammed him and then and got him in that choke? Well, he had a lot of pep at the beginning of the fight, but it didn't really last very long, and I took him under control and made him tap. Well, we know that Phil Henderson trains some pretty tough guys. What is it like to, to train these guys, Phil? What does it take to get in here and do it with these guys? Well, I want to say tonight's pretty much a bittersweet moment because uh, Garrett's going to be taking a little bit of time off. He might be getting married. There's his lovely fiance over there. Okay, well, uh, so, so they're taking some time off. So I might not see him for a while. So. All right, well, Garrett, well, I can't wait till you make that comeback. If you ever do, you got the cup. Congratulations. Nice job tonight. Yeah, I just want to thank you, GMA, for sponsoring us. I want everyone to go over to Players Club tonight. It's going to be a big party. And I want to tell, tell my girlfriend that I love her, Charlie. 
Charlie Christiansen, I love you. And okay, he loves you right there, UCE. Nice job, Garrett. Thank nice you. Job, nice job. I don't want to break his bubble, but that's the same girl that's been hitting on me all night. That same girl? That same girl. She was hitting on me, too. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Good thing Garrett left the building. Good <laughs> thing you might be in your pounding on us. All right, hey, Garrett's come a long ways. You can see that. Phil Henderson has really got those guys to slamming, doing their thing, man. Props to him. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around. In a rematch from last round's finals, Travis Animal Paxton came out here and made sure work of Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn said he's ready to, to pay him back. You know, Tommy Gunn progressively week by week has gotten better, Michael. We've seen that on the ground and on his feet. He actually got a little submission now. He's got submission, so I think this fight might go a little bit longer. I'd like to see a good fight by both these kids. All right, my way and no holds barred at your main event card. Here we go. What does it mean to you to be fighting in the East or in, in the finals tomorrow at the Fair Park? And also, why do you think that you're going to beat Travis uh, this time? Well, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm just glad to be fighting there because I lost last weekend. You know, and uh, I guess from what I understand, they can't find him a fight. You know, I'm willing to fight. I've been working hard on my ground game, been working hard on my stand up. I know Travis is a good fighter. You know, he, he needs to lose one, man, because he, can, he just keeps winning. So, okay, well, we're right there. You heard it, Travis. Might need to lose one, and tomorrow might be the night. Travis, what do you say to that? Are you going to be the champion again? Are you going to continue to win? And is, is your winning streak ever going to be broken? Um, any day anybody can have their winning streak broken. I don't. I'm not planning on winning all of my fights. But hopefully tomorrow I do win. I wish him the best luck. Thanks for giving me the fight. Um, we're, it's going to be a better fight, I think, this time. We have both stepped up our games. We're both training hard. We're both aggressive fighters. And... I hope it does go like all three rounds. It'll be nice. It'll be fun. All right, we heard right there. These guys wanted to go all three rounds. Not very common from fighters. Tommy Gunn, Travis Pax, and best of luck to both of you guys. Thanks a lot. John Ritchie, I got to tell you, I look forward to this fight more this time than last time. There was a lot of bad blood between the two of these guys, and there was really some, kind of some tension in the room and some animosity, and I really like the way these guys are coming in this time as sportsmen to come in here and see, you know, to gauge how Tommy Gunn has improved. If he, is he match, how does he match up with Travis Paxton? You know what, Travis Paxton is one of these guys, Mike, that is always humble, always respectful. Even though there was a little bit of bad blood after he beat up Tommy, you know, he, he was trying to lift him off the mat. Tommy did, uh, you know, get a little upset about it, but he did apologize. And he is here for the sport. He just wants to make this better and, and fight and get as much experience as he possibly can. Tommy Gunn goes 5'6", 155 pounds, but Travis the Animal Paxton, man, the kid is, he's a good wrestler. He's starting to learn submission. He's got heavy hands. He's got big bombs. This kid is a complete package. If he sticks with this, this thing, he can go a long way. I, I think so, Mike. And he's one of these kids that definitely brings the energy. He brings a big crowd. He's got a huge fan base. And that's because not only of the fighter that he is, but his personality. You oh, get to know this guy, and he's a great kid. Without question, it's a testament to the guy that this, this kid is. Everybody likes this kid. You, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody to say anything bad about this kid. He's got about a two-inch height advantage, reach advantage, but they weigh in at the same 155 pounds. Uh, we're going to get things started with these lightweights, and, and I guarantee you there'll be some action in this one. Just like last time, Mike, you know, Travis came out and he was just a real aggressive, but you see he's kind of posting himself, just kind of, or pacing himself rather, just kind of setting back and, and waiting to see what happens. And Tommy Gunn cracked him with a, a gl glancing blow, but I think, that, as we've mentioned before, he just woke the sleeping giant, and you see how just how physical Travis Paxton in. He kind of ragdoll and uh, Tommy Gunn just a little bit with a nice little uh, hip throw there, and uh, he's going to gain nice side mount position. And now he's going for a, now he's going for a oh, choke, geez. and we talked about submission, and he did. He locked that up. He's got the guillotine choke on real tight. He's got his legs wrapped around him, and he's really extending him, and there's the tap. How, how quickly does he put that on? And, and how many times have we seen Tom again get caught with that? It's just uh, the, you got to keep your head up and keep your head you protect your neck. But, boy, look at the crowd that Paxton <laughs> brings. Pets and such, pets and such. Travis Paxton, you won it, man. Congratulations. I thought the fight was going to go a little longer, but he caught him with that guillotine, and it ended it rather really quick. Uh, you see in your crush combat cam brought to you by Pets and Such, uh, Travis Paxton's sponsor, where, you know, it was a pretty systematic victory. He came out, tied up with him, and uh, put him put him down into a guillotine choke and put it on nicely. He's got his hips uh, up off the ground, and, and he's arching his back there with a nice, tight, tight guillotine choke. And, and Travis Paxton, his jiu-jitsu's getting better, so that's the one weak link that he's had. He's getting better in all aspects of his game. Well, congratulations, Travis. And with Paxton, you are our champion.
This post fight interview sponsored by our friends at Mountain High Motorsports. Tommy Gunn, you're stepping here again against Travis and Animal Packs, and one tough kid. You felt his wrath earlier. What was going through your mind when you guys were in there shuffling around and mixing it up? Well, he's a good fighter, you know, and uh, I respect him a lot. You know, there's a lot of people out here that, you know, talk about being tough guys, but they couldn't find him a fight. So on Thursday, I was like, yeah, I'll fight. No that's a, and that's the kind of guy you are, Tommy, stepping in when we have to. We can always count on you guys to do that. Thanks a lot, Tommy, for stepping in here, man. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my sponsor, uh, Sharps Tarps, and also, uh, sorry we couldn't give you guys no blood. I got a little bit, but... No blood right there. Well, Tommy Gunn, man, tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Thanks a lot. I hope to see you again. Yeah. All right. Stop. Now a post-fight interview sponsored by Pets and Such. Pet food, pet supplies, and all kinds of pets just off Bangator at 3500 South. Animal, you're an animal. Woo. Yeah, I think it's safe to say about three-fourths of the crowd is here to see you, brother. Let's hear it for Travis Pax. Thank you. That's got to feel good. It does. This kid kept coming to me all week. Give me a hundred more tickets. I can sell them. Give me a hundred more tickets. And he kept selling them. <laughs> you, you just got a lot of people that like you. And it's, it, I know why, because I know you. But tell the people why you're such, what's such a popular guy. I love this sport. Um, I'm not cocky at all. I like take fights on, but I don't call anybody out. And like Tommy, me, me and Tommy are friends. We'll always be friends. I'm, I respect him for giving me a fight the day before so I could get in here and let my fans see me fight. Right on, brother. Well, hey, you're making a collection of the hardware there. Congratulations. Once again, you're our champion. OK, can I say thanks to Pets and Suck? No, you can't do that. Hell yeah, say it. There's a lot of people here with those shirts on. You bet you can say thanks to them. OK, I want to say thanks to Pets and Suck. If, you know, if you guys haven't went out and seen them, go see them. They got all kind of exotic pets. Sugar gliders, sugar gliders. Go get you a sugar glider. That's what I want. Okay. Yeah, they got sugar gliders. They got awesome salt water, cichlids. All kinds of fresh water. Fish, food. snakes, all kind of stuff. Now I want to say Mountain High, thanks. They got players. They got all kinds of riding gear. You want to go check them out. And if anybody wants to party with me tonight, come to Players Club. Why drive uptown? Nice. The best fight of the night just happened right over here when Travis Paxson threw his hoodie out. <laughs> People wanted an animal shirt. That's right, they want an animal shirts. Speaking of shirts. Speaking of apparel, Jim Hardware. Go check them out. They got a booth over here. It's kind of dark over there. But they got some of the coolest stuff. Somebody left the door open at Pets and Such. All the snakes got out tonight. The Constrictor and Jake the Snake Paul are going to get in here right now. Hey, two very physical kids. You know that, that Jake Paul trains with GMA and, and Slam Inc. Phil and those guys. And Harold Lucambio is on that X Factor, that, that, that team of guys that's supposed to be pretty dang tough. How come Slam Inc. has 18 names? They've got like an identity crisis. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, they do produce some tough fighters. This is going to be a great fight tonight. You're going to see it. Light heavyweight, no holds barred. Check it out. What have you been doing to keep in shape, and why do you think you're going to beat Harold the Constrictor Lucambio tomorrow? I've been training with everyone down at Slam Inc. We've, we've all been working really hard. I, I feel like I'm a much more well-rounded fighter now, and I'm physically and mentally prepared to just take it to him. So. Okay. What does it mean to you to be fighting in the finals, and why do you think you're going to beat Jake the Snake Paul tomorrow? Well, first of all, I want to say thanks to um, Mike, the Ultimate Combat Experience, for giving me the opportunity. I have the edge, I have the heart, I have the flame in my heart. Uh, I'm gonna give it all to him over there in the cage. Well, Johnny Ritchie, it's, it's our main event, but boy, you know, I wanna talk about the interviews. It was like true confessions night tonight, and, and uh, Harold the Commu admitted to being a flamer and uh, teasing his snake late at night with a little rat. <laughs> Mike, we couldn't go show up out throwing a jab in somewhere, but I tell you what, <laughs> both these guys are tough kids. They're physical. We know Jake Paul, we haven't seen him in a while, but he is a kid that, that definitely stands the test of time, and I think he'll be here for a while. 5'11", 190 pounds, and this is one tough kid. I've had the pleasure of watching him train over at my gym with the Slam Inc. crew, and this kid trains hard. His work ethic is right up there with about anybody I've seen. But here, here comes the Constrictor. The Constrictor, and you know this guy can go three rounds, Mike. He's got the win. The one thing that he does brag a lot about is his cardio, and he's in great shape. The one thing I really like about him, though, is when he stands up and he says, you know, this is my house. I think it's great when these fighters take ownership in the show that, hey, Harold Lecombe says the ultimate combat experience is where I roam, where I, it's my domain, and I think that's just great. 
And he's a very class act too, Mike. And then it just shows that Lucambio, you know, he does really want to get into the martial art. He said this is his favorite sport. He loves it. And he just wants to get in here and show to everyone that, hey, win or lose, I'm going to be back. <laughs> well, he goes about 5'8", 195 pounds, giving up a couple inches to the little taller Jake Paul. But he doesn't give up anything on heart. Both these guys have tremendous hearts, tremendous wills to fight. And, and this is why it's our main event tonight. Definitely getting in there and mixing up. Looks like Jake's going for that guillotine. Uh, Harold Lucamio's tried to go in for a takedown. Didn't get it. Jake tried to get the guillotine and didn't get that either. But now he looks like he's got a body lock on. Might try to take him to the mat. What did you just say? You sounded like you were one of those auctioneers. Okay, well, Harold Acambio, these guys both are very composed fighters, uh, doing the little things right there. You see Jake Paul throwing the shoulder in, uh, doing the little things that you don't see in some of the newer fighters. Well, he's been around for a while. I mean, how, how long has Jake Paul been around fighting for us? He's been, I mean, we haven't seen him this round, the past rounds, because he is underage, but we've, he's been fighting for a while, training. Yeah, Gerald's complaining about something. I'm not sure what. I think maybe he thought that Jake Paul was grabbing onto the fence there, but, uh, um, you know, maybe he was. I didn't see it. Well, Jake Paul's got that. He's got the underhooks. He's got the body lock on. Um, do you think it's a smart move for him to take Harold to the ground? Is he a little bit more versed in jiu-jitsu than Harold? Or <laughs> you're, he talking, just stay here and... you're talking way too fast for me to understand you, but you sound like my wife when she's mad at me, so I kind of tuned you out there for a minute. I don't know that you want to – I don't think either one of these guys can get the other one down. I think they're both working on a takedown. I don't know that uh, that Harold Nakambi wants to stand and trade with Jake Paul. Harold's got a pretty good jiu-jitsu background. His striking's what's been kind of suspect in the past. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Here better. we go. What's no? I'm just, just joking. But he's landing. Jake Paul's landing some knees, and he does have Harold pinning against Cage using that shoulder and the knee. But he gets a takedown right there. Slips the leg. That was a down. cute little sweep there, and I say cute because it's kind of a sneaky move. And you see uh, Tito Ortiz do that quite a bit. It's a nice little just heel hook and and sweep, and did a nice job. That's once again these slamming guys have the advantage of been training in the cage. You had your opponent up against the cage. His full body was resting against it. That way you can uh, release that foot and do that little neat little sweep there. Nice job. And Harold is content to stand on the bottom and trade shots and punch up at Jake. And now Jake's on his feet, oh, on a knee, trading shots down to Harold. Harold's back up, back up on the feet. Well, you, you made a good point then, you know. I mean, did Harold want to go down with this kid? And it looks like Jake Paul might be just a little too physical to be underneath. So uh, you, you, your good point was taken here. Well, Harold Acambio needs to score a takedown to where he's on top of this kid. Well, Jake's got him by the head, and he's oh, oh, throwing baby. a big knee that lands right to the side of his face. That was a big knee, and Harold had to get out of that situation and get out of there fast because a couple more of those in this fight would have been over. And it uh, looks like Harold cameo has been inspired by that a little bit. He comes with that with a little more uh, energy than he had a moment ago, but tries to throw a kick, didn't keep his balance, and, and finds himself underneath Jake Paul once again. Once again, and you, like you said before, that might not be a safe place to be just because Jake Paul is so strong. He is so powerful. But uh, Harold Ocambio, he's relaxed, Mike, and he's one of these guys that we talked about. He can go three rounds. He's versed. He's got the lungs. He's got the wind. And, and, and if this is a battle of attrition, <laughs> he might just be able to, to go the distance. We've never it. ever had to, to question his his heart or his you know his lungs for that matter. The kid can go three rounds. It looks like he's barely even breaking a sweat here. He's in a lot better shape than I am. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you've got to score that first round for Jake Pauly. Scored two big takedowns. That big knee was a big uh, factor there. You see here in your crush combat cam. Brought to you by TrendLab.com where these guys got after it. And again, this is why we made him our main event, because these two are, are very skilled uh, fighters, and they're, and they're both going to get after it for three rounds. Wow. You know, I think Jake Paul definitely has shown us, Mike, that he has been training hard. He does look good. He's he's not doing anything real sloppy. And when he first stepped in the ropes with us a long time ago, he was a little bit sloppy. He was just a physical kid, but he's training. And, and like you said, Slime Inc. and his heart, they, they're just progressing that much further in this tournament. Oh, that's a great point. He's, he's really progressed, come a long ways, and you have to attribute that to Phil Henderson. He's really brought this kid along. And, and Jake Paul used to be a kid that just came out here and, and tried to out-physical you, but now he's out, he's out fighting you. So uh, really, he's come a long way. At the beginning, you could tell he's part of that Barlow crew. You know, those guys are like his best friends, but he just tried to rush and crush and grab you and squeeze you, but he's, he's, he's doing a lot better than he did in the beginning. And, and so was Harold, really, Mike. Uh, Harold was tough when he got here. Harold was a pretty sound fighter when he got here. He's got a tremendous background, yeah, trains with uh, Will Bernalis, and, and you expect really good things out of anybody that comes out of that camp. So uh, it's a pretty good uh, matchup here. 
A little bit slow going into the second round, and I think part of the problem is that first round, Harold might have gotten caught here, so he's going to be a little more tentative in his approach. But when you get up to these level of fighter like this, Mike, we've talked about before, it's like a chess match. It's the small incremental victories that you achieve, you know, when you're in this type of position, throwing the knees, getting the head down, getting the takedown, things like that that are just, you know, they're, they're not such a good, they're not so aggressive. They're more just kind of, of just taking it slow. Well, you know, Harold took four or five good knees there, and which probably prompted him to drop down to the mat. You can't need to the head down to the mat. He was in a position there where he couldn't get his head free, and Jake Paul landed four or five consecutive knees that you, you can't take very many of those, many of those. In a position like this where they're kind of tied up, I'd like to see Lonnie, you know, give him a few seconds and then maybe get him back on their feet because this really can, can slow down a fight. But for the people that don't know, it, it, it looks like they're just kind of laying around. But the people that do know about jiu-jitsu, it, it, is, it is something that you have to, to take a look at and say, well, this is a small incremental victories. Well, Lon Lonnie's talking to him. He's going to make sure that they're trying to improve your position. And that's the bottom line. Are you trying to improve where you're at? If you see the guy on top just camping out, then you're going to stand him back up. And right now they're kind of jockeying for position. He had a, a half mount for second there and now he's back into his guard so you're going to give him a little bit of time to work out of this position here and uh, it looks like Harold's trying to climb up the body and as long as there's progress being made from one side or the other you're going to allow him to continue to fight well as they were fighting so like that I think I saw coach Krell Coleman's face I think he's the timer the fish right there one minute Jeremy Screen. one minute boy and he's right on the top of that uh, once again Jake Paul I've got it so far in this round you got to give him the nod he's he landed some pretty big knees and he stayed pretty busy on top he's not really just camping it out in the guard there he's throwing a lot of punches but when you do that you leave yourself exposed to somebody climbing up the body and trying to isolate one of those arms well i think there's you know in the judge's opinion mike you could look at it you could maybe score it a couple different ways i mean i think that harold is really trying to advance his position he has tried to throw on a couple submissions even though they might not be a full attempt he's trying to climb up the bottom he's trying to get him into a position where he's going to get a submission out of it he's doing a masterful job of blocking punches with his feet that was a really nice work there jake paul was somewhat frustrated by that he could didn't get any punches <laughs> off because uh, Harold had reached up with his feet and, and was blocking them. But now, now Jake Paul has got to do something. He's got 10 seconds left here. Let's steal this round and ensure that you get this victory in the round here by uh, staying busy with the last five seconds. And I'm not sure that he's aware of the time. I'm not sure he's aware of the time either, even though Kel Coleman's screaming it in their ear. Well, it's going to wrap up two rounds, and on my scorecard, I've got Jake Paul ahead two to nothing. But when you see your opponent spring up like that and trot across the ring, when you're dragging like that, it can be very intimidating. And so this third round could be pivotal. We're going to check it out when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you just joined us, we're going into round three of our main event where Jake Paul and Harold Bacambio are mixing it up here. You see here in your Crush Combat Cam brought to you by the old Salt City Jail where the se second round there, Jake Paul pretty much was on top the entire time, but he's really dragging now, and I, I think Harold Bacambio is going to be the fresher fighter coming out for round three. We talked about it, we talked about it, and we'll talk about it again. Harold Bacambio is in great shape. He can go three rounds, and I think in my eyes, Mike, to me, Harold Bacambio was trying to advance his position, get a submission, even though it's hard to do against a brute like Jake Paul. Well, you know, I mean, I guess that could be up and open for debate. I think Jake Paul dominated the second round as well as the first. But you see here, the, the, the X factor here, you've got Jake Paul. He's got that whole slamming crew over there in his corner, really trying to get him motivated, get him pumped up. And that can make a huge difference. That can revive you oftentimes when, when you felt like you couldn't go on anymore. And he came out with a smile on his face, giving us the rock on sign, letting us know that he's ready to go for a third round. And we know Harold Ducambio is. Let's just see if he can get out of the clutches Harold, of Jake Paul. how many of those knees are you going to take today <laughs> before he stopped doing that. He keeps shooting in with his head down and leaving it there to be picked apart with those knees. You've got to shoot in lower at the ankles or once you get in, get your head back up and, and try to come around behind your opponent. Really close the gap when you're going in for a takedown. And he's trying to shoot from a mile away and that just leaves you so exposed. All Jake Paul really has to do is just kind of step back one step instead of sprawl real hard, get that head and knee the crap out of it. <laughs> They've got crap in, the, in knees now, Johnny. <laughs> no, the head. Need the crap out of the head. All right. Well, you know, again, Harold Okami is in great shape, but you're not going to be able to do much from underneath. You've got to get out from underneath this kid. You put yourself underneath him all three rounds, and, and this is what happens when you do that. You pay for it. Jake Paul is just a physical, physical kid. 
content to just pin him against the cage and, and drop punches and step back every now and then and, and drop a couple down to his head. But he's got Harold Ocambio all balled up. And, and, and I think Harold, you know, gosh, I, I just wish he would advance his position and maybe even have Lonnie stand these guys up. Well, you know, I, it's, Lonnie's going to step in and stand him up right here because they're not doing anything. But I think really Harold Ocambio's, uh, his, his shortfall here hasn't been his ability. I think his game plan has been flawed. I don't know that uh, he really is executing the fight that he wants to execute. Jake Paul poses a lot of problems for people, and that's what that's what Harold needs to do. Harold needs to be more aggressive, get inside, and then get a nice takedown from inside, but he's trying to shoot those shots from way outside, and he keeps getting caught underneath. And then he ties up with him, and he goes to the ground, and Harold, this might not be the best place, buddy. Hasn't worked for you for the past two rounds. Get back you, on your feet and slug this thing out. Well, you've learned, you should have learned by now that this is not where you want to be. You've got to get around behind this kid or get on top of him when you go to the ground. To pull him into your guard hasn't been successful. The kid's a pretty savvy fighter. He knows how to fight out uh, th those attempted submission. He's been able to hold you at base so far. Uh, I really think that was a big mistake pulling him down into your guard. Right For the first 15 seconds when Harold pulled him down, his feet were crossed. And in the judge's eyes, it just looks like you're trying to camp out. And Harold's not that type of guy. He's got, he's got great he's got great wind. I, don't, I just don't see why he doesn't get well, to his now he just gave up. It. Now he just gave up side mount. And, and Jake Paul continues to progressively win this fight. He's, he's very, as you mentioned, he's been these very incremental victories that he's had from, from the very get-go, he starts on his feet. He winds up on top. He winds up in his guard. He passes the guard. Once he gets here, he stays busy, and he works the body, works the head. He's done a tremendous job tonight, and, and again, with 10 seconds left, in my view, he's won this fight all three rounds and a very decisive victory against a guy that we know to be a really good fighter. Yeah, in my heart, I was rooting for Harold. I really like this guy. I've talked about how he's one of my favorite <laughs> fighters. An attempted but... leg lock there at the end there to finish things off, a little exclamation point there for, for Jake Paul. Harold Lecombe is trying to get the crowd on his side, but unfortunately, I don't think it was uh, it was enough. Well, you can see your crush combat cam, Mike, but he just ate a lot of knees. You talked about it. He, his shot was from a mile away, and he just get caught underneath and just get kneed, and, and Jake Paul really just out physical him, I think, yep. this time. You, you mentioned the crush combat cam brought to you by Mount High Motorsports, where, you know, I just think it was a flawed game plan. They didn't execute what they wanted to do. Harold Lecombe, we know he'll be back, but all right, my opinion doesn't matter, but it, it actually agreed with me this time, which is a very rarity. Uh, Jake Paul does go walk away with the victory. He's your champion, Johnny Ritchie. But again, as I said, we know Harold will be back. Congratulations, Jake the Snake. You got the cup. You're the champion, buddy. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. Harold, I can't say enough about you. How many battles have you been in that were just like this? It just went, there were just gru grueling battles. Three battles with Foster. You guys will see it tonight. It'll be a heck of a show. And uh, also, I can remember KJ Johnson. He's not here in this round, but I wish him the best. He said he was going to come back. What it says, though, it says a lot about you, that you're in there for the long haul. You, you line up against this kid, you better be ready to go three. That's right. Uh, I said, everybody, uh, <laughs> I just want to say thanks to everybody that came here. Without you guys, we wouldn't have this show, so I really appreciate it. And. Uh, <laughs> hey, I said, what a great representative of the sport right here. This guy and all of Mr. Banalas is goop. But hey, again, I hate even saying this to you. You were good, but just not good enough. But hey, you know I love you, bro. I know. I wasn't good enough. And I want to say thanks basketball. again to everybody. So thank you. Hi, right, brother. Now a post-fight interview sponsored by Pets and Such. Pet food, pet supplies, and all kinds of pets just off Bangor at 3500 South. Jake the Snake, Paul Slam Inc., two for two tonight. How do you feel, feel about that fight? I, I don't think I've ever seen you go three rounds. You went three rounds, but that kid, he's tough. How do you feel about the fight? Well, it, it was a tough fight. I'm just glad I could come out and compete again. I know, well, you're underage, so we can't get you the clubs or the fights in the club, but you're here. You put on a great show. Slam Inc., where are you guys located? You guys are training, you guys are you're throwing stuff together. Where at? Um, actually, Johnny, we're up at Ultimate Combat Training Center every afternoon now, so if you want to come up and get classes, train up there four to six. I don't get up early. That's as early as I can get up. My boss over there works the hell out of me, so uh, okay. but we're getting drunk tonight at Club Players. We're partying tonight at Club Players. Oh, you heard it right there. Jake Paul, you won. Congratulations. Nice job. Thank you. I want to want to thank GMA and Club Players for helping the fighters out. Well, thank them. Thanks, guys. Yeah, there you go. Nice job. Ladies, I want to thank you, ladies, for looking so good tonight. We got them for their looks, not for their talks. Johnny Ritchie, once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on the Ultimate Combat Experience.
That's going to put a wrap on the first half of the finals of the Wars of Winter. Tune in next week for the second half of this finals special featuring your main event, Maniac versus Batman. Ben Fuimano and Dennis DeGloria will slug it out in a heavyweight bout you won't want to miss. Also, if you like what you've seen here, the finals of the Sting of Spring are just around the corner. Get your tickets now for Team Las Vegas versus Utah All-Stars at the E-Center. April 23rd, the first 300